Welcome again, friends, for the Bhagavad Gita Satsang. And today is reading from the essence of the Bhagavad Gita by Paramahansa Yogananda, edited by Swami Kriyananda. I have chosen the verse from chapter 10. In fact, there are two verses, they are together, and they say, To those who are attached only to me, and who worship me with love, I impart that discernment of wisdom by which they attain me completely. And the next verse, 11th one, says, Out of pure compassion, that is, out of the selfless gift of love with no admixture of compulsion, I, the Divine One, who dwells in all, set alight in their hearts the blazing lamp of wisdom which banishes their darkness of ignorance. And Swami Kriyananda has a small commentary on this, on these two verses. And he says, It is important for the spiritual aspirant to realize that he doesn't earn anything by seeking God. Divine grace is still a gift of compassion and may be withheld from those who follow the law exactly, but who perhaps out of dryness of heart fail to win his love. God may, on the other hand, reward with the highest wisdom those who in their surrender of perfect devotion only love him. Through the intervention of the Satguru alone, do such blessings come. There are many beautiful aspects in these two verses and he gives the importance of loving God. There are other also aspects that we cannot do it alone. We must make our efforts. But it is the grace of the divine which will finally take us to our goal. So, when we come to the question of loving God, loving the Divine, or in our case, loving the Guru, which also means attunement. In other words, how to attune ourselves. So, there was this lady devotee and she was meditating from 22 years and she felt that she was capable of much higher experiences and of going deeper. But she didn't. Then she remembered that very long ago she had remembered, read about saints and how those saints progressed and how they attained godhood. And they had done it by keeping the Guru, the power of the Guru, in their hearts. So she started keeping the Guru in her heart. She loved nature. She used to see God, Guru and God in nature. She started seeing Guru in all the people around her. And she found that her meditations became very much deeper by themselves. And she progressed quite quickly towards her goal. There was this Acharya in Ananda village, Naya Swami Bharat. And when he came newly to Swami Kriyananda on the path, he asked Swami Kriyananda for some instruction. He said, can you give me any instruction for my meditation? And Swami Kriyananda told him just very few words. He said, keep Divine Mother first. That's it. And Bharat, very soon after Swami told him these words, and he had just come early, early, he had a dream. And that dream, in that he was cycling in his hometown, and there was a vast expanse of sky, and he loved birds. And from the flock of birds, one falcon, falcon is a little bigger bird, 
came swooping down next to his bicycle and it looked as though it was smiling at him in the dream. And he loved the bird so much and he was magnetically drawn towards the bird. And as the bird was flying, he was pedaling. Then the bird started flying a little faster. So he started pedaling faster to keep up with the bird. And then the bird looked at the back, almost as though the bird was telling him, can you do this? And it went even faster. And he started cycling even faster to keep up with the bird. Then the bird started soaring higher. And he thought, how can I do that? And he suddenly felt himself soaring up with the bird. And then the bird started flying. And he was flying with the bird. Of course, it was a dream. But that dream had a meaning. It is that we are magnetically drawn towards the Guru in the beginning, towards the Divine. And we are following the Divine and doing all our efforts towards coming closer to the Divine, to God, to Guru. You can call it anything you like. But it is God, Guru, the Divine, who will help us to fly and help our soul towards its freedom if we persist in our attunement with the Guru. And then this is the beauty of love for God. And God loves us unconditionally. But he also tests the devotee. Whether the devotee is loving him unconditionally. Just like God loves us. He wants to see if we can come on the same wavelength. He can help us when we come on the same wavelength by putting God first. In the beginning, millions of incarnations, we were not even seeking God. Then we started seeking God in the other lifetimes. But then we wanted other things also. Then again, we were seeking God. Then a time comes that we want only God. That is what we want to do. Many of us, we seek God, but then our attention gets little diverted. What we want to do is go straight towards God and keep God first. Keep Divine Mother first. And such was the state of a saint called Surdas. Sant Surdas was a deep devotee of Lord Krishna. He loved Krishna. And Sant Surdas was blind. So he needed a stick to help him nav navigate himself, walk and go around. And so one day he was walking on the road holding his stick and he fell into a pit. And now Krishna watches all his deep devotees. Krishna keeps track of even those who are not yet his devotees. Krishna is always keeping track. And he saw that Surdas has fallen in the pit. So he came to help Surdas in the form of a 10-year-old boy. And so he grabbed the hand of Surdas and pulled him out of the pit and helped him to come back on the road and was just releasing his hand from Surdas to run away. And Surdas was not letting go of Krishna's hand. He was trying to grab Krishna's hand and not let it go. But he was not so quick. And Krishna laughed and he ran away. And Surdas said, Krishna, you think you have run away from me, but externally. But I have tied you to my heart with strong cords of love. You can never forget me. You can never run away from me. And this is the kind of love we want for the Lord. And this is the kind of love God is looking for in us. To put God first. And then there is this hermit who liked to sit next to the river. 
he was a hermit in china so they believe in taoism there and he was a taoist hermit he was sitting next to the river and he was hearing the sounds of the river and he wrote the sound of the river is what i think he was so absorbed in the river there was nothing else in his mind he could hear only the sound of the river so this is the kind of absorption we need immerse ourselves in god so we need concentration and what is concentration concentration is sincerity it's a yearning yearning for god sincerely yearning for god and this will take us to our inner reality it will magnetically draw to us the inner reality and then we'll be able to merge into that inner reality shri yukteswar in autobiography of a yogi we must have all read that he was expounding the scriptures to young yogananda and yogananda had just newly come into yukteswar ji's ashram and at a certain point yogana uh, yukteswar ji stopped and so he told yogananda you are not concentrating on what i'm saying i will not be able to reveal the the truths of these scriptures to you if you are not concentrated and yogananda ji complained he said no sir i am listening to you my body has not moved and i can even repeat exactly what you said and yukteswar ji said you are building three institutions in your mind one a forest retreat in ranchi a school for boys another institution on mount washington which is the center through which later his teachings would be disseminated and a retreat by the ocean in encinitas so these institutions have done such good work they have blessed so many people and yet what a high level of thought and yet yukteswar ji said no you need deeper concentration one day swami kriyananda mentioned he said in meditation even the thought that i am meditating can take you out of deep meditation so much we need to be absorbed in the inner reality that not a single thought not even that i am meditating should come that much absorption one has to have concentration and then we need a reverence and that reverence is i can explain by a beautiful story of a saint who was walking in the park with two disciples and as he was walking one of the two disciples was a woman and she had she was walking on that grass in that park without any footwear to feel the grass under her feet and she felt that everything was around her was alive and the grass was feeling warm and little wet under her feet and she could me uh, understand that maybe she stepping on some living creatures and harming them in the grass she felt that and then she looked at her guru's feet and she saw that as he was walking lifting the foot the grass under his foot was not flattened as soon as he picked up his foot the grass worked up again rose vital and alive again his foot went up, go down when his foot was rising again the grass whereas for the two devotees the way they were walking the grass was getting flattened and she asked the swami 
Swamiji, how come under your foot the grass is not getting flattened? And he smiled and with a very reverent expression on his face and his hand on his heart, he said, The earth knows that I revere her. And when I walk on the earth, I feel that I'm walking on the bosom of my mother. And this is the reverence that with each step, a person who is so absorbed and immersed in God blesses all whom he meets with reverence, totally absorbed in God. And this is what we need. <coughs> And then <clears throat> in today's day, we see that there is so much strife and there is so much anxiety. And we wonder what kind of world are we leaving for our children? What kind of world will they see? And so <clears throat> those who are in tune with God and divine, they are in a stillness through the Hong So techniques, through uh, deep prayer, absorption in the prayer, through using the Om technique and other techniques which our Guru has given us to reach that place of stillness, to reach absorption with the Divine. That is the thing that is needed in the world today. It is not that the world needs something new to be excited about. There is enough already. It is not that the world needs some new idea, some new discovery or invention. No. The world needs that stillness which comes when a person is attuned with the spirit. We are living in a world of duality. Everything is in opposition with each other. There are opposites all the time. There is a reactive attitude. But when we tune in to the Om vibration, which is a pristine vibration, somebody asked, Om is also a vibration. That means it is also movement. So it is also in the realm of duality. No. It is the unstruck vibration. It is the pure vibration. It is the manifestation that God is sharing His love with us. God is manifesting this creation and sharing His love with us. There is no opposite in Om. When we tune into the Om, the stillness which follows is what is needed in this world. And if more and more people do that and commune with spirit, there will be no dissension and we will live in a world where creation is transformed and people live in harmony. So this is what the world needs today. And with this, I'll close with a healing prayer. Let's all sit upright and visualize anyone we know who is in need of a special blessing. Visualize also your family and friends and the whole world. Feel in your heart that the peace, the love and the joy which exists there is being projected to everyone in ever-widening circles and let's pray together. Divine Mother, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all thy children. Manifest thy healing presence in all bodies, all minds, and in all souls. Rubbing the palms together, let's chant Om three times. Oh.
Shanti, Shanti.